Hey YouTube, today we're going to be working a slab of obsidian and I think I have my camera angles down a little bit better so uh, hopefully the quality of this video will be a lot better than the last one I did and uh, I'll, I'll pay more attention to where my forehead iPod assembly is pointing so uh, we're going to be working a fairly thicker slab of obsidian but any thinner for the width that we have here it's going to be a real risky operation and in my next video I'm going to be working a, a raw piece of stone just to show you guys that it works for that too so I'm going to get started on the scissoring this is what I'm using for the initial for the initial uh, scissoring and as well as the thinning flakes actually could get a few of these burrs off so the shape of all my indirect flakers the tips are kind of flat on the top and rounded on the sides If you have any burrs on there, it's good to get those off. Alright, that's good enough. So put that under the knee. Make sure your thighs, your legs are at a 90 degree angle. And that's with any kind of napping. Right here we already have a place to start. And I better show you guys the angles I use. So for the scissoring flakes I use just a straight angle for thinning flakes I angle my pressure flaker down ever so slightly actually my pressure flaker is straight I angle the stone down ever so slightly if I want a really short flake I angle the stone up scissoring flake thinning flake short flake And if you find your flakes aren't coming off at all, try aiming higher on this edge of the platform so you're taking off a thicker flake that'll travel farther. And this appears to be some type of sheen obsidian. I'm not sure which type yet. And I'm going to do this all around the stone. Alright guys. I now have the stone scissored. This is what it looks like. And now we need to raise the edge closer to one surface. And you want to raise the edge closer to the surface where you want to flake. So say I want this side to flake. So I'm going to raise the edge by taking flakes off of the edge with that surface facing up. And if we're going to start on this side, might as well raise the edge of this side to the same, the same face. 
and take care of this face on the second pass. The closer your edge is to the surface, the less likely you are to break the stone in half. Getting better, it's not quite there yet. Alright, when you get to a certain point, just grinding it with a rock works really well. So, for this, just kind of shear it like that. And then I'd grind it laterally with the grinding stone, such as this guy here. And grind it really, really good. Because we're going to be putting a lot of force on the edge. And then we want the edge to be able to have a flake, a really large flake travel instead of just the edge crushing. Right, so I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and then both the ends and we will be ready for our first set of thinning flakes. Stay in tune. Alright, so I have this stone scissored. And it's this side that we're going to be flaking. So I'm going to use my larger, my larger flaker for this. And we're going to start by trying to take off this ridge right here, which was created by our zigzagging flakes on the edge, the end. And there's also a ridge here that we can follow. So let's try taking this one first. Alright, that's what we got. Take one right next to it, but we'll space it out. And so on. I think I need to aim higher on the edge. Yep. See, that's the difference, guys. Just a little bit higher on the edge, and you can have a huge flake instead of just a stupid little tiny flake. So, make sure you space out all the flakes so they don't run into each other too bad. That was a stupid little tiny flake. So for the next flake, I'll just aim a little higher. Yet again, another little tiny flake. Aim higher for the next one. Alright, so now it's time to move on to the other side. So I'm going to start by trying to take off this ridge right here. Oops. So that worked good. Aim high on the edge. 
And I'm mostly talking to myself here. Just like that. Let me make sure I'm getting this all real quick. And I think I am. Could be wrong. Can't really see what I'm filming. Well, I can't see the screen. If it doesn't want to quite go, then I'd move on. And if you leave a really bad uh, ridge, that little chunky spot on the edge, get rid of it using a short flake, so angle the stone up. doesn't help that my copper rod is a little bit loose. I need to figure out if I can jam something in in between the plastic and the copper. <clears throat> That's kind of a weak edge right there. Shouldn't have took it. Well, usually didn't go exactly as I planned, but maybe I might be able to get that from the end here. So the end is a very critical part. I squeeze it like this, and I don't apply any bending pressure to the stone. So you want to get pretty close to the end so your hand absorbs most of the shock. And we just about got all of that saw marks that was left, but this is what we have after the first pass. And if I really wanted to bother with this little tiny spot of saw marks right here, I could just set up a couple platforms right here and shoot for it, but I'm not gonna. So this is what we have. So now I'm going to turn the edge and get the, the edge closer to this surface, and we're gonna do the same exact thing to do that. Alright, so I have my edge prepared to take flakes off of this side now. You can see the edge, hopefully. The edge is usually going to be thinner on the second side you flake because you've reduced a little bit of width. So you definitely want to make a very strong edge and grind it quite a bit. So, as usual, I'm going to start my flake taking advantage of the ridge we have right here on the end. That didn't go very well, but we have a very thick platform right here. Just continue on down the piece, spacing out all your flakes. <clears throat> 